How are you? God bless you. My name is Pastor Israel. I am one of the pastors here at Trinity Church, and I am so excited that you have decided to join us, to tune in. Listen, it is not by coincidence that you're watching this. God is very specific and strategic in what he does, and he has a timely message for your life. And I'm excited because actually what we're going to talk about today is something that we all have in common, whether you are a Christian or a non-Christian, whether you have been a Christian for one day or a Christian for a hundred years. And I am talking about the area of faith. Faith is something that we all have in common. But first, let me pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Help us to receive your word. Help us to understand it. And more than anything, help us to put it into practice. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to talk about faith. And it's actually a two-part series. So I invite you to come back next week because we're going to wrap this up. But faith, we're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about how it works, what can be done with faith, and why it doesn't always seem to work and what we can do to make it work 100% of the time. Now, faith is a pretty straightforward thing. In fact, it's described the same way in the Bible as it is in the dictionary. The dictionary says that faith is having complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The Bible in Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith is confidence in what we hope to have and the assurance about what we do not see. And so they are both uh, essentially the same definition. It's a pretty straightforward definition. It's trust or confidence in someone or something and really believing that you'll have that something. Now, whether you realize it or not, faith is already a big part of your life. Um, we live and exercise faith daily, sometimes without even realizing it. For example, if you've ever ordered anything online, right? Faith is behind that. You have faith that it's going to get to you. It's going to go from digital to a material or a tangible thing in your life. When you take medicine, you have faith that it's going to make you well. When you get in your car, you have faith that it's going to take you from point A to point B. When you swipe your credit card, when you turn on the kitchen faucet, when you click on the switch in your home, when you send out a text message, faith is a part of that process. Now what's interesting is that many times we don't even think twice or doubt that the results will turn out differently than what we expect with these ordinary common things in our lives. And that's because you already carry a great deal of faith in your life without even realizing it. And faith is a huge part of your life and it is a huge part of the Christian life as well. In fact, faith plays a big role in our relationship with God. Faith is what can help you and allow you to experience the fullness of God in ways you've never imagined. Faith, in fact, even just to begin a relationship with God is necessary to have. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists. There it is, there's faith. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In other words, that it pays to go to God, that there is a reward when you go after God. So faith is what can help you begin to walk with God. Faith is what can help you experience an unlimited amount of God in your life. Faith is what can help you see the works of God manifest tangibly in your life. Faith, in fact, can help you live, watch this, with the same authority and power that Jesus lived with here on earth. John 14, 12, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it's no lie. Anyone who believes in me, there's faith, will do the same works I have done. He says, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. So having faith and having faith in Jesus specifically can make life truly incredible. Now, there is someone watching tonight perhaps and you're thinking this, this sounds great, Pastor Israel, but I don't think this could be true for my life. Or maybe you are watching and you've, you're saying to yourself, well, but I've tried this Jesus thing. I've gone to church a few times. I've cracked open the Bible. I've, I've made an effort to have a relationship with Jesus and everything still feels the same. There's no extraordinary or incredible experience happening in my life. Things feel the same. And if that's how you feel, I totally get you. 
Because when I first began my relationship with Jesus, things still felt ordinary. They felt like they weren't changing. They felt mundane. Now, what made it worse is that I ran into people who also had a relationship with Jesus and they would share incredible experiences that they were having using their faith in Jesus and incredible things they were experiencing and life is going incredible for them. All the meanwhile, I'm sitting here with silence, twiddling my thumbs, insert cricket noise, What am I doing wrong? Is my faith broken? Am I not worthy? Because things are happening in their life and in their life and their life and their faith is working and I'm just sort of sitting here in silence. And it turns out, and I didn't realize this until much later, that all I had to do was simply make two adjustments in my life. And maybe this is what you need to do in your life in order to see faith produce results for your life. Number one, I learned and or I realized that I simply had to redirect my faith that I already had and simply place it on Jesus. In the same way that I was sure that FedEx or UPS or USPS or DHL, whoever you use, in the same way I was confident they would deliver my package, in the same way I believed the Tylenol would take away my headache, in the same way I was confident my car would turn on when I put the key in, I needed to believe that Jesus would in fact show up to my life and would work out all my situations in the best way possible. You see, I realized that I wasn't really doing that when it came to Jesus. In fact, sometimes I was willing to put more faith on common man-made things than I was on Jesus. And, and, and even though I felt the urge to fix things myself or make things happen on my own, I decided one day I am going to fight that urge to take control and give Jesus the benefit of the doubt and redirect my faith on his ability and his power. And I decided to take a chance and choose to have faith that my prayers were actually being heard by God. Even though it felt like it wasn't, I decided to take that chance. And it turns out that my prayers, in fact, were being heard. In fact, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 tells us this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. This is the guarantee we have in approaching God. That if we ask for anything according to His will, he hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. Isn't that amazing? That's the guarantee when you choose to put your faith in Jesus, that He hears your prayers, and if He hears your prayers, He will answer your prayers. And if He answers your prayers, you will in fact receive the thing that you have been praying for. Now. That wasn't all I had to do. There was one more thing I needed to do in order for me to, to see my faith produce the results that I was looking for. The second thing I had to do is I needed to learn to wait patiently on Jesus. And if I can be honest, this one was very hard to do, especially because, and I don't know if this has ever happened to you, when you finish praying, everything still seems the same. Everything still seems ordinary. And many times I would grow impatient in Jesus' name, amen, did anything happen? I don't know, and I would grow impatient, and I would let doubt get the best of me, and off I went trying to fix things on my own, and this is why time and time again, I wasn't able to see God working in my life because I kept taking over. And I learned that waiting is a big part of the faith process sometimes. See, I want you to think of the online ordering example I gave you earlier. When you order something online, right, you click the purchase button or submit now or, or give me my order, right? You click the button and then you get a screen that says, thank you for your order, your order has been received. And then what do you do then? What happens next? You wait, right? You begin to just wait. You let the process work itself out. It told you that it would be here and you have faith that it will and so you just begin to wait. Now, I don't think there's any or many of us that begin to think the moment we're done clicking that button, we don't think, wait, wait, wait. What if the purchase button was broken and I only saw it work on my end but it didn't work on the other end? 
What if nothing was sent? What if the computer on the other side where they're processing my order isn't even hooked up? What if the employees quit and there's no one around to ship my order? What if the delivery truck breaks down on the way to my home on the highway? What if their mapping system doesn't work? What if they're not able to find my house? All of these what ifs, kind of silly when you think about it, right? We don't, we don't do that. But that's when we, what we do when we finish praying sometimes. We give in to the what ifs and the doubts. But what if we simply gave God the benefit of the doubt the way we do to these other man-made things? And what if we decided to wait on him the same way we do other things? Waiting is hard but it is a necessary part of the faith process. Now, the amazing thing is that when I began to make these two shifts, place, redirect my faith and place it on Jesus and simply learn to wait on Jesus, I began to see God again and again and again in so many incredible ways in my life. And maybe that's all you need to do. You already have the faith necessary. You exercise faith every day. Now all you have to do is redirect it on Jesus and simply learn to wait on Jesus. Psalm 40 verse one says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. So try it for yourself. See what faith can do when you do redirect it onto Jesus and you decide to wait patiently. Now, we're gonna look at part two next week as we continue our faith topic, and we're gonna talk about why faith doesn't always work, but what we can do to make sure it is always effective 100% of the time. Before I pray, let me just say, if you don't know Jesus, it's not a coincidence you're, you're watching today. God wants to come into your life. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants you to experience all of these great things that your faith can unlock, but you can't do it without a relationship with Jesus. So if that's you, simply where you are, you don't have to close your eyes or you can close your eyes. You can repeat after me, say, Jesus, come into my life. I choose to believe that you are real. And I choose to believe everything this, the Bible says about salvation, that it is free for me to receive. So I receive it right now. Forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord, be my savior. Write my name in your Lamb's book of life and teach me to walk in your ways. All of this I pray in Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. You are now a child of God, and I encourage you to now redirect your faith and place it on Jesus. Wait on him and see what happens. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Help us to apply this in whatever areas we need to. Give us the boldness and the courage. Remind us, Lord, that you hear every one of our prayers and you're ready to answer us. That is the guarantee we have in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make sure you come back next week as we continue our faith topic. God bless you.